Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're doing another Women of Horror Spotlight. Today, I will. Uh, she's an author, and she has a book series out right now. It's called the Seacat Saga, and the fourth book is coming out soon, and that's called Whispers from the Grave. I have with us KK Weekly. KK, welcome to the Horror Room. Hey. Pleasure <laughs> to have you on. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about the Seacat um, Saga. Okay, so um, it's like demons, witches, necromancers. It's dark. I don't write rainbows and butterflies. You know, don't expect to have a happy ending. Everybody dies. But they are my favorites. Um, I generally put like friends and family in there. They never make it. But they know that going into it, they always die before the end of it, which makes it fun. But um, yeah, it's um, it's based here in Washington State on our side of the mountain. So in a little town called Twisp. And um, it's it's pretty dark. There's uh, I don't hold any punches. I got uh, told to pull it back a little bit at one stage. And um, but it's uh yeah, it's good. I like writing I it. it, so I enjoy I love it. it. Now, now, so when you were told to pull it back a little bit, it was too dark. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what did that mean it to you? Meant, it meant at the time uh, we were pushing for like young adult because I'd never done it before, and I went way too dark. I went way too violent or way too uh, murderous, I guess. I don't know. Way too spooky. And uh, she was like, no. So it, eventually it ended up being uh, for adults, um, which kind of left me to, to do what I wanted then, which is really good. But, yeah, I I don't write. I, I write to, like, shock to be honest, it's like, oh shit! Yeah, she did it. I did it. Yeah, because I can imagine. Because because I've I've interviewed um, horror authors who do the YA, and I'm, I'm yeah. like, but at what? It must be tough because like to to determine how far you, you go with those type of books. Yeah, I have a I have an amazing editor though and she she lets me away with quite a lot but then when I get my manuscript back and it has like red through it and she's like <laughs> delete then I know I've gone a bit too far and I'll give it to her because she doesn't lead me astray so <laughs> she's uh yeah she has my best interests at heart. <laughs> You seem like a pleasant individual, KK. Where do you come up with all of these dark images and these dark stories? Um, well, I was born and reared in Ireland, so a lot of our um, folklore and stuff. Um, and I love like the 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 different realms of of the universe and all that, whatever. But you can. I like um, the dark folklore of my own country. So every every book, and I do have stuff about Ireland in it, like I put in um, entities out from uh, my own culture. And then um, I just, I grew up reading stuff, an awful lot of stuff about witches, about demons, about, and of course, like the nuns that scared the life out of you in church and they'd scared the life out of you in school. You were like, oh my God. So yeah, that kind of added to it. I'm like, how can I get my back on this now? So everything, yeah, it kind of, it kind of comes naturally, to be honest. Now, Which is scary in itself. It's yeah. good. <laughs> but, yeah, but. I, I do it with my friends and family because they like to see uh, how they die. They're like, how did you do it? And then they get a giggle out of it. But, yeah. Has it, has it been any point that you kill off a family or friend and they were like, KK, holy shit. Did, did, why'd you go that far? Yeah. <laughs> and I'd say, well, you asked for it. Um, I actually did have a cousin who, um, in in um, another book of mine, she's like, put me in, and I, I put her in as a prostitute. Oh. <laughs> she was like, what the hell? But, That's yeah, so you she got a giggle out of it. It was funny. <laughs> but. <laughs> I, 
I can imagine as an author, it's tough to write a book series. And, and, and the fourth book is coming out right now. now yeah, and the fifth book, always... is, fifth book is halfway done. Oh, wow. Now, yeah. now, did you mean when you first started to make this into a series? Yeah. Um, in my head, um, I wanted to do, like, uh, the first tree to be around Sakesh and to be around my my individual uh, coven of witches. Um, and then I added in certain uh, characters and I kind of broadened it. So after those three, I'm looking at them. That's why I keep looking over this way. Um, after these three, I want to do a standalone. So with a particular character. So in Whispers from the Grave, then um, my characters aren't, like all the characters in the first three books aren't in it. Like you have Molly, you have Joe, who are my love interests. And then you have Victor. Um, so gets in it for a little minute. And um, it kind of ventures in, and that's where my different entities from different realms and different, um, like folklore, all that kind of stuff come into it, and it builds different. Lucifer and Lilith are in all of them because they're always into mischief and they're causing issues. So you're guaranteed that the two of them are going to turn up and do something, but yeah. Now, now when, how do you determine where you're going to close each book um when i start writing a new book i write the last line first so i know exactly how it's going to end and then when i start writing i write all the way up until i hit that line and then i know it's done now do you have like <laughs> a, now do you already have in mind like an ending to yeah. close the whole entire story out mm-hmm I don't, I don't structure, I've, I've read and I've heard a lot of people that they structure it, they, they do plot lines, they do this, they do this, they do this, so me, I write, I think about it, what way do I want this part of the story to end, I'll write the very last line and then I'll start the book, and then I will make shit up as I go <laughs> until I reach that line, and that's it, and then I know that story's done. Yeah. Now, how many times has, has the end all be all ending changed? Never. So that, that that's a cement. That that's is cement. the ending. Yeah, that is the wow. ending. Wow. And I will write until, and I will switch things around, and I will um, change a lot of stuff to fit that ending because that's exactly the way I want it to end. So, yeah, that's it. Now, to be going to these dark places in your head yeah. when you're writing, do you worry ever that, that oh my goodness, that this might turn me into a dark person? <laughs> Sorry, I should laugh. Um, no, really, I do always wonder about um, if, there, if anybody looked up my Google searches, it would be kind of scary. But um, no, not really. I'm a very, I'm a very level person so and i know who i am myself so no i'm okay i'm not gonna t i'm not going to like do something as a muse and then go do it go that worked yeah and then write about it now <laughs> now, now out of all the death you, deaths you had with any of your characters in the book which yeah. one which one death would you be like oh hells no i wouldn't want to die that way You broke up. I didn't oh. hear you. Out of oh. all the oh. books that I've oh. ri written, oh. which death oh. is it? Which death yeah, affected me? No, I'm sorry. So which death did you write down? And you'd be like, "Oh hell's no! I would not want to die that way." Oh, um, I don't think so. In this series, I don't think so. In the saga, I think everybody, every. Body that has died um, has died exactly as I want them to and as the saga goes on um, they're dying even more gruesome actually <laughs> yeah which is but uh, <laughs> that's slow 
No, and I, it's you were talking about like, does it make you make you like the star person? I have started like giggling to myself as I kill people. Oh. It's weird. <laughs> it's because as I'm writing it, I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna die when they read it, and I think it's very funny. But um, maybe there is an issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty dark. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty dark. But listen, it, you have to be a load of dark. <laughs> You, you definitely have to be a little dark to write horror. I mean, or just create horror. Yeah. You know, that'd be a little dark. Now, now, have you been a horror fan your whole entire life? I think so. Have I what? Okay. Are you, oh, hold on a second. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay. Now, now, have you been a horror fan your whole entire life? Actually, no. I am um, initially when I was a lot younger, my favorite book was Jane Eyre, which is pretty dark. When you it think about dark. it, it is dark. And I have so many different editions. Um, I try to find the oldest and the most unique editions, like wherever I go. Um, so I read that uh, when I was quite young, I think it was about 12 when I read that. Um, and it always made an impression on me. Um, but then I moved on to Jackie Collins, and that blew my mind as a teenager. I was like, oh, my. <laughs> it's kind of like, okay. And then um, I pretty much moved on to, like, Stephen King, of course. And, um, um, yeah, in general, I don't know. I, I, I've never been one for foo-foo books. So it has to really hold my attention, and I do like the more serious books, and I, I do, um, I do enjoy. Uh, I don't like a happy ending. Does that sound weird? It seems really cliche. Like I love Nicholas Sparks movies, but I won't read the books. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's because I know it's always going to be happy ending, and I would rather watch a happy film. And yeah. go back to reading my dark book. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. But I, granted, like, there's a lot of um, horror books and there's a lot of dark books that end well. Like, my books don't end bad. You know, bad stuff happens, during them and stuff, but they don't end bad for the most part. It just, it ends on either a cliffhanger or, the, or it ends on a, oh, okay. Well, that was crap. But for the for the um, for not crap as in it was shit. No, it was like crap for the character that it happened to. But um, no, I don't think the end end sad. I lie. Um, Saket did not end happy. That was actually no. Yeah, no, they don't end um, really on a happy note. They end on a, a rough note where you know something worse is going to happen so technically it could be worse that kind of way that now, was very drawn out to that simple question sorry yeah no that's good <laughs> now, now 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 when it comes to your writing because you said you're i mean your fourth book is about to be released soon yeah. and you're already halfway through your fifth book yeah so when you finish one book are you already automatically on to the second one yeah I think it's because um, when I finished the the uh, the four book Wizards on the Grave, Hidden Magic was already in my head. So as soon as I finished that one, I already knew what I was going to do for the next one and what characters I didn't involve in that one. I knew I wanted to make a big thing about them in the next one. And um, so they tend to flow, but... Um, the first three flowed into each other really nicely because I wanted it as that, but the fourth one ends on its own, which leaves the fifth one open to do its own little thing as well. Which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want it all like, connected because I didn't want people to say, oh God, I have to read the first one to be able to know what happens yeah. in the fifth and the sixth one, you know? Because mm -hmm. if you like the first one, yes, you're going to do the second and third, which I've done amazingly because... People enjoy the story, but I didn't want to drag it out so much so that it gets a little bit tedious and it's like meh. So that's why I went to the different characters. Now, 
have you noticed who's your target audience when it comes to your books? Have you noticed a, a certain demographic or age range? Um, I think honestly, um, it's not it's not deemed for young adult, but you know my my young adult like nieces and nephews um, have read it. They're in sixteen, seventeen. Um, and they didn't see anything, you know, that would have shocked them. Do you know what I mean? Um, because they're they're very red anyway. So, um, but I think from like the ages of like eighteen upwards, and um, any of the stuff that I've done, it's always come back at like ages like uh, twenty four to thirty seven, and then from the ages of like forty and onwards. So there's there is quite a broad spectrum and it's actually quite balanced between women and men which make me happy because i i like to write for everybody and i don't want any of my writing to be deemed as oh it's a woman's book you know i want it to be i want men to say hell yeah i'll read it you know because it's my kind of book do you know what i mean i think Mm -hmm. men and all are more inclined to pick up stephen king because of stephen king and women Mm -hmm. are as well and that's that's the best thing about it is because it goes it, it like keeps both sexes happy or whatever so i like everybody to read well read what you're going to read but it's nice when you can write for everybody and i agree because everybody men women every race we all oh, work yeah. for and, and and like i when i see some creators authors I want to say they pigeonhole themselves to, okay, I'm only going to target to this audience. Would it be men, mm-hmm. women, black people, white people, Hispanic, whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to target to this audience. It's kind of doing yourself like an injustice, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. But, you know, everybody has their own thoughts. And, uh, you know, when they're writing, they, it's what they're comfortable with. Like me, I will always have a same-sex couple in my books. I don't care. I have family who are gay, both male and female. I will write for everybody. I have the majority of my characters. They always have my main character, Molly, in the Sket Saga. She's black. My sorcerers are black. All my other guys are white. And for the most part, they're all my family members. So I was like... (laughs) I come from a rainbow family. Don't make me not use them in it. They want to be characters. I'm going to do it. If anybody has issues with it, they don't want to read my stuff because of it. I'm okay with that too. You know, so it doesn't bother me. You'll either love me or hate me, and that's okay too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, do you pay attention to bad reviews? Of course. I think that you'd be silly not to. But bad reviews and good reviews i feel give you the same response of what you should be listening to you know you can you can't please everybody but at the end of the day the amount of the amount of work that that you put in and you know other authors put into their work and you acknowledge that i did a damn good job and yes you didn't like it and that's okay because this person liked it and you know that's great so yeah i i take i take it all both of them on the chin and i say okay i'm really glad you liked it and i'm sorry that didn't you know it wasn't your style but hopefully you'll find something that you know you enjoy better but it doesn't really make any difference to how i write you know and and that's one of the things you got to do. I mean, even as I'm, I mean, if you're a new creator, I don't care if it's YouTube, books, movies, whatever. Like, you, you do have to come to the. I, I had to do the same thing. You, you you had to come to this self realization that not everybody is gonna like your stuff, and that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, because you just gotta find your niche audience, and and once you find them, and you put out good work, they're gonna continue following you. Oh, of course, yeah. Everybody's different. Everybody reads. I'm sure there wasn't a lot of twelve year olds reading Jane Eyre, but maybe there was. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I should. Who knows? And I know that I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, I don't read, and that's okay too. You know, yeah. I I won't be able to not read, but a lot of people just don't like to read, and they they might listen to it or like me. Sometimes I don't want to read a book, but I'll watch it. So there's something for everybody. 
you know, it doesn't matter. If you don't like one author, you're going to love another. So it really, there's there's somebody for everybody. Horror has so many different subgenres mixed into the genre. Yeah. So well, I need someone who says I don't like horror. I'm like, you just haven't, you just haven't found the, you just haven't found the right one that's yeah. for you. Because yeah. there's a little bit of horror. I don't like, I'm a huge horror fan, and I don't like all of horror, you know? There's certain yeah. subgenres of horror that I don't like, but like, you just gotta find, but that's one thing, beautiful one thing about horror. There's so many different options. So oh, many yeah. different options. Yeah, because when um, I was told that this saga was going under um, a cult horror, I was like, a cult horror? I was like, that will actually really work. A magical realism. There, there's so many, like you were saying, there's so many options where you're not just, oh, it's horror, so everybody's expecting it to be, ah, you know. Yeah. I didn't scream myself to sleep. That wasn't horror. So, you know, it's nice to have the big options and it makes it so much easier for everybody else to stomach it, you know, so. <laughs> All right. Yeah. KK, I'm going to do something that I do. Every once in okay. a while on my on my interviews, I'm gonna ask you three random horror questions. This is personal opinion. Okay. Okay. What was the first horror movie that scared the shit out of you? <gasps> Evil Dead. The original. Yeah. The original. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh. When she got raped in the forest by the tree, I swear to God, I nearly died. I still think about it. It scared the life out of me, and I wasn't supposed to be watching it. I was actually sitting on the stairs watching through the crack of the door, and I wasn't supposed to be watching it. it scared the living shit out of me. Sorry, go it's ahead. It really terrifying movie. It's a terrifying. Yeah. How, how old? How old were you? When you oh watched God. That? Um. I don't think I don't think I was I was maybe like ten maybe. I don't know. Okay. I remember my dad shouting, "Get up to bed." <laughs> 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 scared the light that, out of me yeah it's a terrifying movie that's a terrifying yeah. that's a good one all right the the second one is who is one horror character it could be from a book movie that you wouldn't mind hanging out with Ooh, letterface why letterface because he's so weird because he's so weird and he freaks me out the idea that somebody would actually cut somebody's face off and wear it <laughs> it's so weird it's like Hannibal Lecter no you would hang out with him I'd like I'd like to see what he's got to say for himself <laughs> I don't think he even it talks was just, yeah. <laughs> it was just one on one and he was kept behind like this area and mm -hmm. he didn't have to like sit beside me I, i'd have some questions like he okay. clearly had a bad upbringing like what happened to him as a child horrible you know? it's mommy issues it's it's mommy issues like majority yeah, of yeah. our characters we all got mommy always mm, yeah. yes <laughs> and the final question is what's one horror movie that everybody loves that you can't stand hmm What is that film with your man? It's like, ee, 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 ee. What is that? Um, Psycho. Thank you. I never could get into that. Hmm. You didn't like Psycho? I loved The Shining, but I could never get into Psycho. I don't know. Maybe I watched it when I was too young and it just didn't. Yeah. It went over my head or whatever. But it just, maybe it's because the black and white. I, do, I don't know. And talking about mommy issues, that guy in North East <laughs> definitely had mommy issues. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he kept her forever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Strange. All right. This is a random question. Why do you think men who have mommy issues uh, um, are are are, 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 are more likely to become serial killers and violent? In my head, I'm like maybe they weren't breastfed. I don't know. It's like they're trying to stop them from I'm breastfeeding. Come on. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like all the serial killers in the world. It always had they they kind of had mommy issues as well. Yeah, it's weird. It's I I I I don't even know the answer. She would think Is it because issues. they're so dependent? They're so dependent on their mothers. Where their mothers? I don't know. 
It's a hard question Where? to ask. I've never thought about it. Yeah, and it, and it usually calls the violence towards women too, which makes no sense. If you have mommy, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know to, I'd love to know the answer to that. Like, would it be, uh, it would it be like from having a bad relationship with their mother and then they get in a relationship and they're like, they see traits that they don't like and that's where they take it out on? But like I if the mother's we, gone and all of a sudden... But I've noticed this myself. I'm not gonna... Listen, I, I hope I don't get no shit in the comments. But I've noticed this. This is not all single... This is not all single mothers, so I'm not putting in a generalized statement. But I've seen some single mothers oh, yeah. who have sons and they're so overbearing. Like, they're so overbearing. Over, it's almost like their son is like their husband. You know what I mean? And it's kind of weird... And is it just like they're giving them too much responsibility? I think, I, I think they give their sons whatever they want. You know what I mean? Oh, kind of. And I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's a guilt thing because their father's not there or something. I don't know, but like, they tend to give because I, I, I've noticed single mothers are tougher on their daughters than they are their sons. They let their sons, you know, get away with murder, literally. But, um, oh, I think that's I, I think that's whether it's single or married. I think the sons get a free reign a little bit more than the daughters because mothers see themselves and their daughters and they're like, yeah, you're going to, no, you're not going to wear that going out where the son is like, see you later. And she's like, peace yeah. out, son. You know, yeah. have a good day. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I, so I, I think it really depends on the person. It depends on mm -hmm. the person's own upbringing and how their parents were with them. It could be a lot of stuff with that, you know. So I would like to watch. I would, I would like to read a book or, or see a movie on that because all those guys I, I got on the wall, letter facing yeah. all them, they all got mommy issues, and I wonder why <laughs> it comes to that. All right, KK, where can everyone yeah. find you and your books? Um, you can go on anywhere online. You can go to my website, Amazon, literally any online bookstore, all that fun stuff. You can find them there. Awesome. Well, KK, this has been a blast. Listen, everyone, get over to Amazon and grab the first three books right now. The, for, the fourth book will be out soon. Uh huh. Of it. And, and look out for book number five. She's already halfway through it. It's insane. You're <laughs> rocking and rolling. Yeah. KK, this has been a blast well, having you on. You're more than welcome to come on anytime, okay? Yeah. Hey, and just FYI, we're not saying anything bad about single mothers. We, oh, no, like, no, 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 no. Power to the single and mothers. Okay. And we're not saying. And, and we're, no, we're, and we're just talking saying, about. We're just talking about horror fictional. They all. We're talking about like, horror. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Yes. I just horror. need to correct that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and serial killers. So we, 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 we're, talking about, we're, talking about, we're talking about serial killers and, and horror characters. That's not yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, everyone. Thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Spruce, and that's KK Weekly. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.